Hi everyone, welcome to How to Start a Child and Family Assessment. I am Vicky Shevlin from Social Work Sorted and in this short video we are going to talk about what happens after a referral, understanding legislation and policy when it comes to child and family assessments and explaining a child and family assessment. If you are new around here, I am a social worker and have previously been a child protection conference chair. My entire career has been in child protection, working with children in need, so children under section 17 of the Children Act, and child protection which is under section 47 of the Children Act, as well as being a conference chair where I was in a quality and assurance team. I bring all of that experience to my training and hopefully by the end of this short video, you will feel like some of these social workers. Increased confidence, not as worried and anxious, finding this information really useful and practical and relevant for the work that you are doing every single day. I create resources for newly qualified social workers, but they're also really helpful for student social workers and any social worker who wants a refresher on practice. So, what happens after a referral? I actually have a video which talks about the referral process and how you can analyse referrals. So maybe go and watch that after this. But once a referral comes in to local authority children's services, working together 2023, which is our statutory guidance, informs us that a manager or practice supervisor has to decide the next steps. In section 153 or paragraph 153 of working together 2023, it tells us that unless a piece of information or unless a referral received is one of significant concern, so if a referral received is in need of immediate protection or urgent action, or if there is a reasonable cause to suspect that the child is suffering or likely to suffer significant harm, we would be undertaking an assessment or an investigation under section 47. But if there is no immediate identified risk, the next step may be an assessment under Section 17 of the Children Act 1989. And that is what this series is going to cover. Once that decision has been made, and as a newly qualified social worker, it is not on you to make that decision, I have to be really clear, the assessment will then be allocated, potentially to you. If you're a student, it may be allocated for you to co-work it with another practitioner. Thinking about the legislation and policy that connects to child and family assessments, let's go back to the, well, we call it the basics, but I didn't always know this. Legislation is a law or a set of laws that has been passed by Parliament. And the word is also used to descri describe the act of making a new law. So some of the important legislation that you need to consider for child and family assessments, is the Children Act 1989, the Children Act 2004, and the Children and Social Care Act 2017. But that is not an exclusive list. The next thing you need to consider is statutory guidance. Now, statutory guidance is issued under various acts which make it similar to law. So you can go to the statutory guidance working together 2023 and it will tell you all the various acts that connect to that statutory guidance. But essentially, there is a reason why we have to follow it. What was also relevant or maybe helpful for you to read through is keeping children safe in education 2023 because when you are working in children's services it's very likely that you are going to be co-working with other agencies and that includes schools. Keeping children safe in education 2023 is quite historically updated more often than working together to safeguard children 2023 so the most recent version of that was 2018. It only changed in December. The next thing you need to think about is your local authority policies and procedures. That might sound obvious to you, and if it does, then that's great. But I have worked with so many social workers and some managers who haven't always taken the time to go to their local authority policy and procedures. I don't know how to make it sound more exciting, but very often there will be situations that may arise for you as a social worker and you may feel like you're not sure what to do, you're not sure how to challenge things, you're not sure how to explain things to other agencies. For example, if there are families that perhaps are not opening the door to you, parents who might be labelled as non-engaging, there may be a meeting that you can't attend and you want somebody else to chair in your place. There is very likely a policy 
within your local authority or multiple local authorities sometimes share the same policy and procedures, that will be helpful for, t for you and will literally give you a step by step. It's often in bullet points. So if you haven't taken the time to do that and you're having a specific issue, then I would really recommend going to read through them. Again, I can't make it any more exciting, but it often has answers for you that you may not have considered before. One of the things I always recommend newly qualified social workers do is make an online folder, save it to your desktop of all the relevant pages of the Children Act working together of your local authority policy and procedures because there's no way that you're going to remember everything off the top of your head. And rather than taking the time to search things, open up a web page and reel through a massive document like Working Together 2023, it can be a really good idea to get the pages that are helpful for you. Maybe it's some of the workflow pages, maybe it is some of the pages that have the assessment framework on and save them into your desktop so it's really easy for you to access them and bring them up. It's really important to remember that when we're talking about legislation and policy, legislation, law, statutory guidance are not free from prejudice and discrimination. Yes, we absolutely have to follow the law because that is part of our job, but you're a social worker, you are a critical thinker, do not turn your brain off to the fact that prejudice and discrimination can show up in a number of different ways. Finally, we're going to talk about explaining a child and family assessment. Often, as a newly qualified social worker, you may be very good at explaining why we are undertaking an assessment. We can talk about the referral information. We can talk about the information we've received. We can even talk about the outcomes of the assessment. So why we might be undertaking something to think about the next steps. But often, and more so as a conference chair, I would meet families who didn't understand what an assessment was. Nobody had sat down and explained the process with them before it even began. If you're not a social worker, assessment is a very abstract term. So when I think of assessment, I think of my driving test because I went to do a driving test and it was called an assessment centre. Yes, our assessments are holistic. But when we're in children's services, one thing that we often forget to talk to families about is that when we're referring to an assessment, there is a written document. So that assessment is going to be a written document. I have seen issues with that in the past when that hasn't been explained to children and families. And then at the end of the process, they are given this written document, the assessment with their words in and with the words of others. And it causes a lot of upset and a lot of confusion from something that could have been really simply explained at the start. Don't always assume that things are obvious. When we're able to explain to people that assessment is a written document, it also enables us to be sensitive to people's needs, whether they need specific support when things are written if they need support with reading, writing, literacy, if English isn't their second language. So it's always vital to say that. And if people say, well, of course it is, that's obvious, that's fine, but there will always be a family where that wasn't clear. The next thing to say is that an assessment is written by you, the social worker. It's authored by a social worker. And again, that's important because I've met families who have believed that by me telling them that I'm going to do an assessment or that an assessment is going to take place, that they are going to have to sit down and do a test. Again, that's not ridiculous for anyone to think or to assume when they hear the word assessment. So be really clear that it is going to be written by you. It's going to be your, your analysis, include your analysis of situations. You are going to talk to other people about it. And ultimately, a manager will read it and make a decision about the words that you have written. The final thing to say, which links into that, is that an assessment is not a pass or fail. Again, it's something that is assumed by families. And very often, even though we can say this, it feels like a pass or fail. It feels like a judgment, perhaps on their parenting or a part of their life. For a child, it can feel like a lot of pressure. So it's important to reiterate that it isn't a pass or fail and that there are various outcomes that can come from it. So you will have your outcomes within an assessment. That might be that there's no further action. It might be that you recommend a child in need plan. It might be that you recommend section 47, depending on the information. So it's not always as clear as one thing or another. There may be a number of different outcomes. Again, I'll repeat, don't make assumptions about people's understanding and don't be afraid to clarify. This isn't about patronising people. It's about thinking from the perspective of somebody 
who isn't in a social work office every single day, who isn't hearing the language that we use and we pick up as habit. This is the first video in a series all about how to start a child and family assessment. We've talked about getting started today. The next video is going to be about how to prepare. We're going to talk about managing priorities in video number three. Video number four is multi-agency working and video number five is all about social work skills. I have a CPD accredited training which is next running on Wednesday the 14th of February and on Saturday the 17th of February. It's assessment skills for newly qualified social workers. This is a one day training to upskill you or if you are a social work leader to upskill your staff, increase their confidence in undertaking child and family assessments and ultimately do all of those things whilst building relationships with families. We know that child and family assessment is often the first point of contact between social workers and children and families and a child and family assessment as a document, as a piece of work, as an intervention massively influences that child and family's journey with your local authority. So if you have social workers who, like the social workers who often come to me, who don't feel as confident, who feel nervous, who feel anxious, who don't feel like they have clarity on what they need to do and how they need to do it, then that is why I designed this training. If you want any more information about it, you can go to the show notes or you can email me vicky at socialworksorted.com. Make sure you subscribe so you'll be able to get the next video as soon as it is released. And thank you for watching.